I think, I mean, we have to start off acknowledging that Parkinson's for each individual is unique in some way in terms of presentation, symptoms, way you respond to medications, your prognosis, your, the sort of trajectory of your disease. And this also holds true for different groups of people. So we know that Parkinson's disease, although it is more common in men, does affect women as well, and but differently so. And if you look at how women experience it, there are actually you know, studies that have shown that women do differ in terms of their symptoms. In terms of motor symptoms, we tend to be more tremor dominant. We tend to have more facial masking. Um, we tend to have more restless leg syndrome, um, which drives our partners crazy. Um, we also tend to have more dyskinesias from, from use of levodopa. Um, Good news is we seem to have less disease progression, if, if that's a, that, that is a bonus. And the non-motor symptoms tend to affect women to a very significant degree compared to our male counterparts, especially when it comes to mood and sleep disturbances, uh, so anxiety and depression we're talking about, we're talking about fatigue and apathy, um, your genital symptoms, and more women complain of pain. Um, we tend to have less cognitive impairment and hallucinations and delusions and that sort of thing, um, which is, I, I guess a good thing. But one of the major um, areas that I think impacts our non-motor motor symptoms are, are the psychosocial issues that we as women face. And women do have more psychological distress. If you question them about their health-related quality of life, it tends to be lower um, than for men. That, that negative stress um, sort of self-identity crisis tends to happen more for women. Um, and, and all of these combine sort of lead to women being, um, taking longer to be diagnosed and, and less likely to be referred for evaluation by a movement disorder specialist. So, I mean, I think it's all very impactful on the way women are managed as well. <laughs>